that we can come together and we can, we can come together to solve this problem. And I don't want it to just be politicians and some runners. I want the youth out there. I want the people in the city and people in the world. And Donald Trump, when he twitters and says he's bringing in tanks, I want to show another image of what's happening in Chicago and the amazing work that's being done by, by places like Champ, but mostly by people like you. We don't just want the politicians, the preachers, and, and the police to talk for you. We want to hear your voice. And Mr. Spree and some of the people in this room have put together a song called Strides for Peace that we're going to be releasing out into the world soon. I hope you'll help us share it when we do. And one of the lines there is, how fast will you run for another life, right? Okay? We can bring everybody together, and I really, really hope, and I'm sure there's some adults in this room who can help you know, make arrangements for you to get there, but we want you representing on June 1st. So can anybody want to like make a commitment right now? You can race for peace, race against gun violence? We all, raise all your right. hand. All Thank the time, you. again. Okay, yep. call us in, and we'll be talking Wednesday. We will, absolutely. Okay, Thank so you. we'll be having a conversation Wednesday. All right, without further ado, everybody, I'm so excited to introduce our speaker today. Uh, I'm going to read his bio, and we're going to play a very special video and song uh, on behalf of Sound of the Future, Spree, as well as uh, the young people that we have here represented. Uh, so, before I get started, I met this gentleman uh, when he was on the panel at the Spotlight On with Mr. Dwayne Wade. And some of you know that Dwayne Wade has uh, used a Spotlight On initiative to highlight a few of our champs at the United Center. And so, he just blew me away with his ability to communicate um, his idea of education, his idea of marketing, his idea of networking. And after the panel was over, I said, man, I would love to connect with you. I reached out to him. I asked him if he would come on a Saturday. You can see his beautiful princess is here with him. He is a good father because he says, man, I'll be with my daughter. And right after this, I have to take my daughter somewhere. And so we want to honor his time, but I want y'all to go ahead and give him a round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Kenny Mitchell is a 10-year Gatorade veteran. He is the head of consumer engagement where he oversees the brand's integrated marketing efforts, including advertising, digital and social media, branded content, and media strategy. Previously, Mitchell oversaw brand and consumer marketing for NASCAR, where he led the development and execution of the annual marketing plan and oversaw media strategies and planning. Prior to NASCAR, Mitchell was the vice president and general manager at the Duke Tour, a division of NBC Sports uh, Group. He was responsible for overseeing all aspects of the new tour brand and business, including partnerships, sales, marketing, content, events, operations, and execution. Before his time at NASCAR to do tour, Mitchell spent nearly eight years at Gatorade in various brands and marketing roles, ultimately serving as a director in the sports marketing, um, and then also in the role of managing many other brand sports, marketing partnerships, including athlete, and property relations, uh, sponsorship negotiations, activation, and the creation and execution of retail programs. He holds a BA, watch this, from Dartmouth College in New, well, how do you pronounce? Uh, yeah, it's New Hampshire, and what's the city? Hanover. Hanover, New Hanover. Um, an MBA from Dartmouth's Tuck School of Business. If you know anything about business, that's one of the top schools of business anywhere in the world, and he holds an MBA there. He was inducted into the Dartmouth Sports Hall of Fame, watch this, as a member of the school's men's basketball uh, team. He and his wife have to live in Chicago and have a daughter named Carter. So once again, let's put your hands together. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yes. Call the plays. Anyone else? That's right. That's absolutely right. So a point guard is the leader on the team. Usually they kind of represent the coach on the floor. The point guard actually has to know all of the plays because he needs to know where everyone else belongs on the court. But the point guard is not the one taking all the shots. The point guard is the one that's setting up the team to be successful, setting up the team to score, and ultimately setting up the team to win, right? And I follow that model of being a point guard in work and in life. Anyone who works on my team knows I am all about making sure the team knows the game plan, they know their roles, and they're set up to win. So I take that model of being a point guard. Think about the skills I learned starting as a kid, eight, nine years old, um, playing the game. It still very much applies in life. So a little bit more about me. I already talked a little bit about being uh, raised in Philadelphia as well as Flint, Michigan. There's some shots from when I was about my daughter's age. That's me and my family, very small family, this beautiful young lady here, my wife that has been married for about 14 years. Um, you just read my bio, so some of this information is on here. So I uh, went to Dartmouth College. Uh, my major was economics and sociology, so a little bit of art and a little bit of science. Um, played ball and then I uh, got my master's degree. This is one of my favorite pictures of us as a family dressed up for Halloween um, in the, the Hill of Batman. Um, so my job at Gatorade, so it's called the Head of Consumer Engagement. Um, but what I actually do is when I, I think of my job is like my, I'm responsible for making people understand, be inspired by, and love the brand and all that it stands for, and ultimately buy the product, right? That's what advertising is, is, is intended to do. And that includes everything that has to do with the media, everything that has to do with advertising, PR, digital, social. So if you guys ever see a Gatorade commercial, you now know the person who leads the team that runs all of those, those communications. It's a, it's a privilege and an honor to, to have this type of role, but it's actually incredibly, incredibly exciting. And what's funny is when I was your age and in your shoes, I didn't know a job like this even existed. I didn't know it existed. Like I knew I had a passion for sports, but I didn't even know this type of job existed. And that's part of the three, uh, three E's. We talk about exposure. Exposure is the type of things that opens your eyes to opportunities that you may not have even known existed. It's just something for me that I didn't know existed and it's incredibly fun. It keeps me involved in sports, you know, as a former athlete, but yet it's a way that I can do something that, 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 uh, that gets me really excited. Um, in terms of things that I use every day that comes from my education, I want to get a few people to see if anyone can guess the type of things that are used all the time in the job. Any guesses? I'm sorry? A pen. A pen? Well, those are tools. I'm thinking about things that you learn or, or, or skills that you learn as a part of education. Critical thinking? Absolutely. Absolutely critical thinking. Business management, a big part of it. So I have a, a team of about 25 people. I have ad agencies and other folks that work that I work with that help to support it. I have a PL that I have to manage over $100 million um, in media. I have to oversee all of that, so business management is pretty critical. Uh, communication. communication, absolutely. My job as the head of consumer engagement is all about communication. So I have to be able to articulate myself incredibly well in front of tons of people. As a matter of fact, just this Tuesday, I went to uh, <clears throat> New York to present our plans for next year to the board of PepsiCo, which includes the CEO, various board members, and you got to be able to stand up and very confidently and very articulately um, communicate. Marketing? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Marketing is, is the core of, of, of what we do. Absolutely. Time management. Yes, time management. Time management is actually critical because I have a family and a life. I have my own personal interests. I have this job to do, right? Um, I need to do it well. You got a lot of priorities that you have to balance. Any other? Man right. right here? No. So, some of the most basic skills that we use constantly, constantly putting together presentations, constantly, constantly communicating, whether it be oral or whether it be through memos, et cetera. So, like, literally, the, the basics of the basics in terms of reading and writing. Analytics. Analytics. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
analytical skills is incredibly important as well. That's something that uh, you know that you learn through your math and your sciences and, uh, and other type classes. But analytical, analytical skills are critically important. Collaboration and teamwork. So that's something that is really important to me um, as an individual, as a person who plays team sports. But it's it's. Uh, something that I did realize that you find pretty early on is like nothing gets done by yourself. Nothing gets done by yourself. You're always working with a team. So you gotta learn how to be sometimes a good leader, sometimes just a good team member, right? Somebody that's just in the team and is, is following orders and getting stuff done. Somebody that is a pleasure to work with. You, you'd be surprised by how far that takes you, just being someone that is actually a pleasure to work with and is highly collaborative. Creativity is obviously a big part of it. You guys demonstrated tremendous creativity with that video, so I think that this, this team probably has an overflow um, of, of creativity. And then listening and learning. And um, can't emphasize this enough that even in the classes that you guys are in that are the wackest and most boring class, they if the ability to learn and to absorb, especially things that may not actually have uh, a perfect application at the moment, but will be meaningful later, is unbelievably critical. So the, the idea to me is like learning, like the fun that comes with learning, like that is something that you will not stop. You won't stop when you get through school. Like just having this desire to really, really be curious and, and having this desire to constantly be learning. I have to learn things just to stay up on my industry. If somebody, someone worked in advertising and marketing 10 years ago, the only thing they had to worry about was television ads, print ads, and radio spots. Social media and the way that it exists now didn't exist back then. So now, how does someone learn how to market when you're constantly needing to evolve and learn the different medias uh, that are out there, the different ways that people engage? I'm like, I'm making a lot of our advertising for folks like you to look at on your phone. Because I know that's where your eyes are and that's where your time is being spent. Which is way different than 10 years ago when someone was saying, all right, I'm gonna you know, get this in front of people on the television screens, everyone's watching TV. So you have to constantly have this attitude and this desire to continue, continue to learn. All right. So now I wanna go, before I jump, any kind of core questions or anything I've touched on so far? No? All right. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Some of my obstacles. Um, you know, I think exposure was definitely one of them. Like uh, not knowing about different facets of like careers that I could, you know, try to get into. Not understanding what steps I may need to take as a part of the process. So um, to try to overcome those, I'm like, hey, try to constantly be a learner. But all, always asking questions and trying to learn from other people. Um, and you know, constantly trying to stay here. One of the ways I try to overcome it is just, just exposure and uh, understanding is one of, the, one of the big obstacles. What was one of your biggest failures? One of my biggest failures. So, um, probably my biggest failure was um, after I finished playing ball. I went and worked in the advertising industry. Um, I worked for a company called TMP Worldwide. They're a digital advertising company. And um, it was during the time when there was a, they call it a bubble. It's a bubble, but it's an internet bubble. Where a lot of companies were coming online, creating websites and creating businesses. Um, and they were completely overvalued. There were too many people who were making these type of businesses. So it looked like the economy was growing, but there was actually a bubble associated with it. But that bubble burst ended up impacting a lot of people's jobs, including mine. So I got laid off in that job. And it was, you know, one of those things where it was a, you know, I took it very, very personally. I also needed to be able to pay my rent, right? Um, so that was like something I had to bounce back from quickly. Um, but that was probably one of my biggest failures was being let go by my company. Others? Good?
incredibly, incredibly uh, random things, such as I work in what's called uh, their innovation team, so coming up with new products. You guys ever tasted G2? Yep. So Gatorade is a uh, lower calorie, so I was the person who was responsible for making that product like, to help they call commercialize it to bring it to market. And in that process, I learned so much about how a hot filled bottle is made. So these bottles that you have here, they are the product that's inside, it's a variety of ingredients, is created and is made in like really hot temperatures. And the reason it's made so hot is to make sure that the product actually stays safe. So it's sanitized. They can fill it in boiling hot temperatures. This little this bottle here starts out as a little thing that's almost like a condom. It's like super small. <laughs> it's called a preform. It gets filled with this hot, hot water or hot uh, product, expands out, and then they put the cap on it to keep it sealed and sanitized. I had to learn about that whole process. I felt like you needed to use like you have to take an engineering class actually to learn about how this product is made in order to create new products. So that's just one example of, you know, as a part of the, the process of working in Gary, depending on the work that I'm doing, we learn a tremendous amount. I have no clue about preformed hot filled packaging and how the product actually is manufactured and distributed and why the weight of the bottle is what it is to make sure other bottles are on top of it it doesn't collapse down like all these these different types of things you learn um it's a different part of the job so i can like literally go on based on the different jobs i've had i've had different experiences where i've learned a whole lot that to me is a part of that continuous learning but you have to kind of have the desire to dive in about stuff that, you know, it's, it's, it's really different, but it's important, important for the job. Um, that's a good question. Good question. You said, so what made you want to, want to join Gatorade? So when I was in, um, I told you guys about that um, failure, right? I laid off my company. What, uh, what that led me to is I was like, all right, I'm going to have to retool and get some additional skills. That led me to business school, right? When I went to business school, I said, all right, this marketing thing is kind of interesting from the advertising agency I worked at, and I've always loved sports. So how can I marry those two together and try to make a career out of it? So that's what I went to graduate school trying to do. I want to go and work um, in sports. I want to marry it with the, my interest in marketing. I looked at a variety of different jobs. I looked at, you know, working for a team, like the Sixers or a Bulls or Philadelphia Eagles, right? Working at the league, like the NFL, the NBA, professional baseball. Working for an agency, like the kind of guys that are the agents to athletes or marketing agencies that work with different brands. Um, and ultimately looked at, looked at brands, and brands like Gatorade or Nike or Under Armour, et cetera. And Ended up deciding on, come on, guys. Ended up deciding on Gatorade because I love the brand. It's a world class brand. It's one of the top five sports brands in the world. Um, I like Chicago. Wanted to go to a nice city. Nike is headquartered in Portland, Oregon, which is not much good luck. It's something my wife is not going to be uh, to. <laughs> um, and it's, it, when you're working in a marketing function for a company like Gatorade ends up being what they call it a general manager type job. It's a type of job where I am leading a team, I'm helping to run a business. Those type of skills, if I wanted to be an entrepreneur, I could use those same type of skills. If I wanted to work in marketing at Facebook, I could do that as well. Some learning skills that I thought were going to be, you know, kind of, kind of help me in the future. Does that answer your question? More, more, like, more. Yeah. What, what was something that you had to change about yourself personally to deal with this Something I had to change about myself personally. Um. Um. 
I think one of the things that I learned is that when you're working with like a big group or a big team, um, you got to be able to relate to people on their level. And every person and personality is like different. So people are motivated by different things. Some people have like internal motivation. Um, I'm incredibly passionate about this job. Like, 
think about it. I mean, I have a America's course, you know. It, it's, uh, it, it's, it's fun, it's interesting, it's challenging, um, but, the, but, you know, it, it's not like um, marketing diapers, you know what I mean? Or, or, or uh, you know, uh, some pantyhose or something. It's like something I have an affinity for, I used as a kid, I really like. Um, so it's, it, it, it's a lot of fun. So as a marketing professional,
is honestly someone's job. When I worked in the innovation group, that was my job was to come out with new innovations and new products for Gatorade. So I worked on the G2 product that you guys are familiar with. And for a while, we had this little pouch that was like an energy, um, like energy shot. I worked on that one. Um, worked on some powder products that we had. And the way that you come up with those, obviously, is understanding what athletes use. So we, we have a team that um, uh, it's called the Gatorade Sports Science Institute. It's a team of scientists. They're like exercise physiologists. Like seven of them are PhDs. I feel like a real idiot when I talk to them because they're super smart. Um, but they're constantly looking at what are new things that can help athletes perform better. So the bars are a way to help quell hunger and give you a little bit of uh, fueling as you go out. Powder products that address different needs. There's like a little chews that help you with energy, especially for some people that don't want too much sloshing around in their stomach. Is literally, there's a whole crew that's dedicated to that um, full time, constantly coming up with, with uh, products. You got a follow up question? Yeah, I got a question. Gatorade Mountain Beast. Gatorade Mountain Beast. <laughs> you know, that's, that's actually not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. Because it, 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 it's another way to deliver you know, functional benefits. The, the one challenge we have is um, sometimes there's an issue with what they call dental erosion. Basically, messed up your teeth. Um, if you, it'd be the equivalent of having, you know, something sweet in your mouth for a long time, stuff in your teeth. You know what I mean? So it can, it can, it can mess up your teeth. But what you're describing, like, it's like a new way to try to deliver something, is really, really smart. That's really smart. What's the difference between like the That's a great question. That's a great question, and I'm not sure if there's a typical day necessarily. Um, I spend uh, a fair amount of time um, working on advertising campaigns. Um, and advertising campaigns have a pretty um, simple process. You start with figuring out what business needs you have, so I might be working on that, right? You then create what is called a brief. Brief is basically um, putting together uh, what are you trying to accomplish and how and why. And I'll describe that in a bit when we uh, look at a few of these ads, like what the briefs were for those ads, or kind of like the direction before you get into the creative idea. I evaluate a lot of creative things. I created a campaign. Is it working? Is it not working? Are there changes that we need to make? Anything from the sound to the visuals to the talent to whatever whatever it might be. Um, I do a tremendous amount of what I'm doing right now, which is like sharing, bringing people along, presenting different ideas. Um, I, I, uh, on Monday, I'll be going in front of our sales force for the central region and sharing a bunch of campaigns that we work on. So I'm, I'm kind of like a, a shepherd, someone who's like, you know, Get the team galvanized so they can go out and sell the product well. Um, in my current job, I do a lot of kind of career management and career planning for the people on my team. So I'm making sure they're getting good development, learning new skills, getting promoted if that's warranted, um, and helping them navigate where, where they need to go um, in their career. Um, so it's a, it's a variety of things. I think any, any given day, I can be doing. Things dealing with people, we can be doing things dealing with the campaigns that we're working on, we work with a lot of agency partners, people that are um, external, so dealing with them a lot. So it, 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 it really depends. But every day feels actually pretty different once it's done. Does it require a lot of travel? Local? It, it does. I travel a lot. Part of I travel a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, pro I probably leave um, Chicago uh, two to two to four times a month. Um, so this week I was in New York for a few days. Next week I'm here for a whole week. But I, I travel in the U.S. as well as both uh, in Brazil, and London, and Spain, um, which is really cool. Talk about exposure um, from that perspective. But yeah, it does, it does require a bit of travel. Oh, that's 
that's a, that's a good question. Yeah, he's so he's, I said, I'm a point guard, so who are, who are my other people on the squad? So um, I'd say my, my um, let me see, this is a good uh, position analogies. My Kevin Durant, my, my three slash four is a woman on my team named Lauren, who um, is a marketing director and works on a lot of our campaigns. She's like, like my score goes hard, um, very good teammate. Um, my power forward is this kid, Michael. He's a brother from Connecticut. Uh, he actually played basketball too, he played basketball at Yale. Um, he runs all of what we call digital strategies, everything that we do on the digital side, from Gatorade, for social media, from um, first party day, like everything that we do on the digital side, he, he runs. Um, let me see. My center might be um, a woman named Katie. She runs all of our PR for Gatorade. I'm just thinking about it in terms of uh, kind of how my team is set up. My, my, my person that comes off the bench is probably Andrew, who runs, yeah, yeah my six man. He, um, he, he runs uh, a lot of work that we do globally. So I don't do work just in the US. I do campaigns that are in South America, that are in uh, Western Europe, that are in Australia. So he, he helps to kind of corral a lot of that work. Um, but yeah, we got, we, we got a nice little spot. Um, head on, very, very directly. I think that um, when you have negativity and you let it fester, it can grow. It's like a, like a little disease. You want, to, you want to catch it when it's, <laughs> when it's small before it gets big. Um, so I believe in truth and candor, and I believe in addressing things head on. It's like it, it, before the head starts to form the whole body. Transparency um, and communication, and like um, you know, holding people accountable. So if you have issues, like I have no problem pulling people together. If you have an issue with you and you, let's all get together and let's talk about it. Let's see where it came from. Because usually, intent is not the problem. You know, but you usually don't have people that are like trying to do something really bad. But it's like one thing you misinterpret, and then it steamrolls into bigger issues. I try to catch things as quickly as possible, be as honest as possible, and get people together to make sure that you can address things and be mature about it. And then sometimes I have to kind of the, the adjudicate jump balls, like things where it's like might be a misunderstanding and somebody needs to kind of like settle the score. Um, coming in and doing that, I have no problem doing, but um, try to catch things early that are really kind of transparent. So, Mr. Mitchell, <clears throat> I was so like impressed with just how y'all on the panel worked together and talked, like, and shared different ideas and perspectives. Yeah. So, just more of the fun stuff of like making commercials. Obviously, we have a lot of talent in the room, and our champs in 2015, we won a White House Film Festival, and that was pretty cool to be able to go in uh, with the president, President Obama, I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and have our video shown across the world. So what are some of the things that you find 
um, like trendy or characteristic as like the athletes that you meet, like the Dwayne Ways or Kevin Durant's. Talk about some of their characteristics that you see that make them who they are. Okay, um, absolutely. I think the, the thing that I found to be incredibly, incredibly common um, with like the most of the athletes and the most of that, that I've seen is the, the work that they put in to their job to make it look so easy. KD, a guy who's basically seven feet to shoot 25 footers like they're water, you know, he's putting up hundreds and thousands of shots daily. The work that he puts in is unbelievable to make it all look so easy. And that is true with Serena Williams. The reason why she's the best tennis player in the world is because she's the hardest working tennis player in the world. She is so nice when she works it's so incredibly hard. Um, and, and I, like that is incredibly consistent. Like the most elite folks are usually the hardest working. LeBron is the hardest working, first one in the gym. First one when he's not a Gatorade athlete. Like just knowing how these guys work out. The same is true for Peyton Manning. The same is definitely true for Tom Brady. Um, like, you know, the best guys are always the hardest working. Absolutely, and, and that's the thing that I wanted everybody to get. It's like, there are no shortcuts to greatness. There's the foundation of hard work, and there's no other way around it, guys. So when you're, when you're grinding and you're tired, and I know we have a spring break coming up in a few weeks, and I've been noticing a lot of people kind of mentally checking out, and when you mentally check out, it does play a role in your physical body. So a lot of, a lot of students that I've talked to just this week and last week is like, hey, Mr. Singleton, the reason why I snapped on my teacher, the reason why I snapped on this, this other classmate is because I'm tired, I have a lot going on. But here's the thing that you gotta understand, is like even when, when he mentioned, I'll use Kevin Durant as, as an example, even when he don't feel like it, he's still going to the gym. Even when he's tired, he's still putting in that work because this is the price to be great. And so when we watch him, on TV, it seems seamless, it seems natural, but there is a lot of hard work that goes behind being great. And I, I just wanna, I wanna make it very clear that even with you guys sacrificing your time on Saturday to be here, that no one is making you come here on Saturday, but yet you're still here, it shows that you're determined to be great. It shows that you're willing to go the extra mile. And that's what the world must see is that, that, that we're willing to pay the price for greatness, okay? And so I know, guys, we have a few more weeks to spring break, but let's finish strong. I'm using your words. Let's, we can do it. Let's go out and take it. We can get it, guys. We can, we can reach our goals and our dreams. And so, you know, having said that, I want you to dig deep within yourself and ask yourself just like the tough question, do I want it bad enough? And, I'm, and, and am I willing to sacrifice and pay the price for it? And if the answer is yes, it won't be any more talking about it. We'll see it. Which goes back to what I was saying that we passed earlier about, you know, kind of thinking outside the box of what they started in 19. With, with young folks, you know, more and more of you see them. Um, do you see a relationship? Gatorade uh, is about fueling athletic performance. Yes, it is. Do you see a relationship between that and also, in addition to physically fu uh, fueling yourself, keeping yourself hydrated, with all the social media and distractions? I work with youth here at the Gary Homer Center and also athletes. And so, what we put in our minds, too, I noticed you taking a lot of your reader, your learner, with what we take in feeding our, our, our minds. Is that, do you see that in your role also fueling performance in terms of excellence in your team? Yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, what, you know, fuel can be defined in a lot of different yeah. ways, right? So there's obviously, you know, 
fuel and your, you, know, you can treat your body like a car, but you know, the gas that you put in it is a certain type of fuel. Um, but also the things that you process and internalize and digest in terms of what you lean, what you, what you read, what you learn, what you observe, like all of those things are a part of, of fueling you, right? So it, it, using LeBron as an example, like very few people look at more film on basketball than LeBron James. Like he knows your tendencies, he knows that you like to go left or he knows that you like to go right, he knows that you like to do the step back J. He knows your tendency because he is a student of the game. And you can't be doing that and being on Netflix all day, right? Like he's, he's made a very purposeful choice to like, if I'm gonna be excellent, I gotta make this commitment to excellence. And he has all the time and all the resources in the world to do a lot of things, but he's committed to being great. So what he is doing in terms of his extra time when somebody else might be chilling, he is out there working. He's out there using his brain. He is out there. He, he's out there doing whatever he can to be the best. And that's another thing that is very you know, consistent with them among the athletes. They'll tell you about all the things they miss, all the parties they miss. Serena didn't go to the prom. Like they will tell you about all the things that they sacrifice to be great. But they'll also tell you that they would do it in a heartbeat again because that's that, that's how important it is to them. So. Thank you. Thank you. Help me answer your question. Great. Yeah. Oh, you just messed with your hair. All right. Cool. Well, like, and you guys can't really, like, 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 where did the power come from? Where did the power come from? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's a knockoff of Gatorade. <laughs> 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 it is. I mean, like, it, it, it's, it was a, there was one brand in a category, and the categories that they look attractive, and people are going to see them as a business opportunity. So they came and made their own person. It's, it's as simple as that. It's, you, know, you guys know how that is. It's like, whether it's a music artist or something in fashion, it's like someone that's making their really hot women tights, then all of a sudden Nike and Under Armour have their tights. Like it's, 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 you know, it was a knockoff of, of, of the original. So, so that means. What are the main reasons? Um, so you heard that story I told you about where it started? It started at Florida, University of Florida. All of the What's the name of Florida's team? The Gators. The Gators, the Gators, Gator All right, so let's go into this little exercise. So I have a few different ads that I want to share with you guys. And I want to share them with you and I want you guys to think a little bit about what the main message is. So anytime, and this will be something interesting for you guys now after we do this, when you see advertising going forward, usually people don't create them just because it's fun or just because it's cool. They're usually trying to communicate something. So I want you guys to watch a few of these ads with me and think about what was the key message? What was, what were they trying to communicate? And why? So not just the what, but the why. What were they trying to communicate and why? And I guarantee you, when I describe the process of the brief, like what the assignment is, if you nail that question, you probably understood what the brief was and why we actually did it, why, why we actually did that. So I got a few little super random gifts here. None of them are all that special. So it's like a Gatorade bottle. There's a towel from the Super Bowl, the Gatorade towel. A belt for bleacher report, very, very random. A little bag here, Gatorade. A t shirt that when you sweat, it says keep sweating on here, which is kind of cool. <laughs> and then this bag itself. So we're going to give all these up. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, we're gonna, literally, I'm going to take everything on. So this bag is actually from the Super Bowl. It's like Super Bowl. It's a really cool bag. Um, all right, and Carter is going to be my helper when we, when we pass him out. So I think I have maybe five or six commercials here, and whoever nails for each one of them kind of the answer of what the main message is um, is going to, going to get one of the prizes. Three things I want you to think about. A, what is the main message? That's a key question. 
Second, how did it make you feel? Because advertising, in my opinion, if it's not making you feel something, whether it is inspiration, excitement, thoughtfulness, um, aspiration, motivation, humor, if it's not making you feel something, it's probably not doing its job well. And then at the end, I'll just ask a few guys what the goal is kind of your favorite. And the last ad I'm actually going to show you is something that we call a rough cut, because it's not done yet. It hasn't launched yet. It'll launch in April, and you see it a ton, uh, especially during the NBA playoffs. But this will be something new and fresh that you guys will see here, but it's not done. So you'll, you'll get to see a little bit of that working process here. All right, we good? Good. All right. We're going to go to the first one. I'm not even going to set these up. I'll talk about them afterwards, but we're going to go to the first one. I want you to take it, check it out. Do you know what the volume is?
Chicago South Side access to opportunities to help them achieve their dreams.
that good or say on your could you have worked harder than before? That is close enough. That's close enough. We're going to take this. Up. The idea for this one was rivalries. Like rivalries, right? And how they fuel you to go out and compete, right? Second version that we have 